Over time, the imperial courts of China have been surrounded by secrecy, authority, and richness. Emperors held complete power within their lavish palaces, enjoying unimaginable luxuries and indulgences throughout their lives. However, hidden beneath their extravagant way of living were secrets that were never intended to be revealed to the public. What were the secret longings and illicit enjoyments of these powerful leaders? In what ways did their uncontrolled desires influence the path of Chinese history, whether positively or negatively? Imperial Chinese Court Life Certain emperors had unique methods for assessing the loyalty of their officials. One emperor once brought a donkey into the court and claimed it was a horse. People who claimed it was a donkey faced consequences, but those who asserted it was a horse were rewarded with promotions. Emperors frequently enjoyed presenting themselves as intellectuals and patrons of the arts. Emperor Qianlong, who reigned from 1736 to 1796, serves as a prime illustration. Regarded as the final remarkable ruler of China, Qianlong excelled in poetry, calligraphy, and the collection of art. During his rule, he achieved many advancements in culture and the arts. The court enjoyed magnificent entertainment. Baixiong performers showcased acrobatics, singing, dancing, magic tricks, and strength acts. Not only were these shows entertaining, but they also demonstrated the emperor's influence and talent in attracting top performers. Court banquets were lavish, featuring a plethora of dishes being served. The emperor sampled a small portion of every dish, dining on an elevated table to emphasize his elevated rank. Sex life. Picture yourself as an emperor in the 11th century, having 121 women serving you a number selected to account for approximately one-third of the year. The women were organized in a rigid ranking system. The empress was in the highest position, with consorts and wives each fulfilling specific roles in palace life and politics. However, the emperor's focus extended beyond simply overseeing a vast harem. Certain rulers, guided by Taoist principles, were fixated on discovering eternal life through unconventional methods. They believed that sleeping with multiple women without climaxing would grant them immortality. Based on guidance from Taoist priests, the emperors participated in these practices in order to accumulate and protect their life force. They thought that increasing the number of women they had sexual relations with would make them stronger and give them eternal life. Emperor's Sexual Rotation Schedule in ancient China, people thought the emperor's sexual behavior determined the well-being of the entire empire. This wasn't just a mere belief, but rather a principle that guides. The emperor's daily agenda was meticulously planned to accommodate both his official responsibilities and personal activities. Clocks in ancient China from the 10th century served the purpose of not only indicating time, but also coordinating the emperor's night activities. In China and certain other Asian nations, individuals calculated age starting from conception, not birth. It was believed that women were more prone to getting pregnant on evenings close to the full moon due to the idea that the powerful female energy, yin, could counteract the male energy, yang, of the emperor. During these evenings, the emperor's primary wives and the empress would accompany him with the goal of bearing children with favorable traits. During nights close to the new moon, less important women would accompany the emperor, providing their yin energy to balance out his yang. Imperial Chinese Wealth The wealth of Chinese emperors was comparable to that of Europe's top royal families, Habsburgs and Muggles. Their magnificence extended beyond just riches showcasing a profound artistic culture. The grandeur can still be seen today in the Forbidden City in Beijing and the Palace Museum in Taiwan, displaying a large assortment of royal treasures. The daily routines of emperors were defined by excessive luxury. They journeyed with opulent sedan chairs carried by servants. Emperors were laid to rest with the same opulence in death. Their faces were covered in gold cloth. 
their fingers adorned with rings, and they were wrapped in white silk shrouds, decorated with dragons and phoenixes. The extravagant burial stood in stark contrast to how regular individuals viewed private property as temporary, state-held asset instead of personal riches. Imperial Chinese Violence During ancient eras, the imperial court represented not only luxury and prosperity, but also served as a venue for harsh and sometimes brutal punishments. Betrayal and espionage were met with the brutal penalty of five horses split the body. This cruel technique aimed to eliminate the individual in both their current life and in the next. For grave offenses, authorities could be dismembered while still alive, or even have their skin peeled off while still alive. The punishment known as death by a thousand cuts was the most well known. This technique was created with the intention of causing intense suffering through the application of many small incisions spread out over an extended time frame. Emperors were famous for their brutal actions to keep control. The search for power was so intense that even unsuspecting family members could face repercussions. Royal daughters often passed away at a young age because of being ignored, while those who criticized the emperor risked being castrated. Not only did the accused endure suffering, their families, friends, and neighbors were frequently subjected to harsh penalties as a result. In battles, Chinese soldiers displayed their courage by offering the heads of enemy soldiers to their emperor or generals. This action was unrelated to any religious or ritual practices, but was simply a means to receive their compensation. Some prisoners of war were at risk of being killed, while others were sent to isolated parts of the empire. Imperial Chinese Clothing In the glittering world of the Chinese imperial court, no detail was too small when it came to fashion. Every aspect of attire was carefully orchestrated to reflect the hierarchy and splendor of the court. Court members were required to wear three distinct types of clothing, everyday outfits, formal court attire, and elaborate ceremonial robes. The emperor's wardrobe was a spectacle of unparalleled luxury. His garments were crafted from the finest silk, adorned with gold threads and embellished with pearls and jade. Since the Sui dynasty, the color yellow became a hallmark of imperial authority, reserved solely for the emperor. This vibrant hue symbolized the emperor's supreme status and set him apart from all others. The emperor's accessories were no less grand. His ensemble included intricately designed belts, ceremonial hats, delicately adorned hairpins, and ornate bracelets. He also carried fragrant pouches filled with exquisite scents, further emphasizing his regal presence. During the Qing dynasty, the emperor's robes reached new heights of opulence. These garments were not only luxurious, but also meticulously decorated with elaborate stitching and embroidered symbols. Reflecting the Qing emperor's equestrian heritage, their robes featured long horseshoe-shaped cuffs. This design detail was more than a fashion statement. It was a gesture of etiquette, as showing one's hands was considered disrespectful. Imperial Chinese Concubines Imperial Harem Life in ancient China was not as glamorous as it may appear. For numerous mistresses, the palace served as a gilded cage rather than a lavish sanctuary. They could face a severe and relentless destiny. For instance, consider Emperor Shizan from the 16th century. His rule was notorious for its harshness and distrust. Reportedly, more than 200 concubines died at his command. In fear for their lives, a group of 16 concubines tried to murder Shizan. During the night, they sneaked into his room with a silk scarf and a hairpin, attempting to kill him by strangulation and stabbing his eye. Nevertheless, Shizan's empress stepped in and rescued him. The consequences of their failed uprising were gruesome. The concubines were mutilated and their heads mounted on stakes to frighten others. Inside the royal residence, concubines were organized according to a rigid hierarchy comprising eight different levels. Even in the midst of intense rivalry, 
Concubines and eunuchs frequently developed strong connections, seeking solace in their mutual struggles. Surprisingly, emperors did not confine their affections solely to women. Men who were the partners of female rulers were also present in the royal court. The Han Dynasty Emperor Ai supposedly loved his male lover so dearly that he chose to cut off the sleeve of his robe instead of waking up his lover who had fallen asleep on it. This display of affection resulted in the term the passion of the sleeve, which is still popular in China to signify same-sex love. These dirty amusements were the dark side of the grandeur and glory of ancient China. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, give huge thumbs up and subscribe for more content.